take a look at the bad lads of today. Lazy, violent, and out of control. 50 years ago, they knew how to deal with jobs like this. It was called National Service. Now a group of 21st century bad lads are about to get a short, sharp shock. Shut up! Shut up! Oh. Shut your mouth! Shut, Shut up! Or you'll be locked up and you'll get no food! That's what I want! Hurry up! Hurry up! Go, 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 go! Let's go! Come on! I hate you, boy! And I'm only just at you! Fifty years ago, national service was compulsory. Every young man aged 18 to 24 spent two years in the armed forces. Now, from all over Britain, these 30 lads have signed up for army training, 1950s style. Shut up! You keep quiet, your eyes open, your mouth closed. Welcome to the pain train, gentlemen. Get up, pull up from the rear. Back in the 1950s, national service training turned boys into men, giving them a healthy dose of discipline. But knocking this rabble into shape will be a tall order. They are a pretty unpleasant bunch. I am a criminal. If it's not nailed down, I will take it. I've been doing for ABA, someone assault, criminal damage, drugs, possession, you know, seen crimes. I've dabbled in a bit of credit card fraud, held my nose occasionally. I've been charged with GBH and I did six months in prison for that. I've been to young offenders for six months and strange ways for a month. My attitude to life is that I don't give a I'm a laser little shit who smokes too much weed. I don't give a about the bomb. All these lads admit to committing crime. Some petty, some serious, and not all have been caught. Between them, they've clocked up over 700 hours of community service and nearly four years in the nick. For many of these jobs, this could be the last chance to turn their lives around. This is home for the next month. An army base run by 12 soldiers with 200 years of military experience between them. All have been fully briefed in the training methods of the period, a far cry from those of the modern army. Right, ladies, get yourselves off. Let's go. Get yourselves over there. Follow me. Let's go. Come on. The boys are now on military soil and about to meet their platoon sergeant. Alistair Ray served for 24 years as a military instructor in the Royal Logistics Corps. Now his job is to knock our 30 recruits into shape. Raise your right hands now, every single one of you. Place your right hand down the front of your trousers. Get them in there. Shut up. Get your hand down the trousers and grasp your pink squidgy bollocks now. And give them a good squeeze. What you've got in the palm of your hand may well help you over the forthcoming weeks. Because to get through this particular program of training, I can tell you now, you need balls. What have you got in the palm of your right hand? Balls, Sergeant! What do you need to get through this training? Balls, Sergeant! Too bloody well right you do. You, get out here. Get out here! You, get out here. Get out here. Turn and face this platoon. Looking here, we got something that looks like it escaped out of a tropical fish tank. <laughs> but it's not funny. I have got to turn these into leaders of men. The first lesson is we've got to teach them how to be gentlemen. That is what the army's all about. Style, finesse, class. Is it not? Yes, Sergeant. What is it? So, style, class, and finesse. Louder! Style, class, and finesse. Style, class, and finesse. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stand. What do you got? What do you got? Dancing. What do you mean you're dancing? We're not here to bloody well dance. Take a look on your face. Shut up. Get 
stand in there, Nemo. <laughs> you, stand here, face me. What do you got in the back of your head? What's that? Ponytail, Sarge. A ponytail, Sarge. Oh, no. <laughs> That's fun, Sarge. Now, you can swap the flies off with that. Get back in the ranks now. Move yourself. Nemo, you're going to lose that lovely made of hair you got on your head. Because it does not fit, does it? No, Sergeant. Louder. No, Sergeant. With aggression. No, Sergeant. Well done. We're starting to get somewhere. The lads are about to meet their first officer, Captain Harry Lort Phillips, who's in day-to-day -day charge of both the recruits and the military staff at the base. He has big plans for these lads to push them way beyond basic training. Churchill platoon is awaiting your further instruction, sir. The staff around you here have had decades of experience. Their job over the next four weeks is to turn you lot into soldiers befitting the best army in the world. However, I'm looking for more than that. I'm looking for those of you in this cesspit in front of me who show any potential officer material. Finding officer potential in this rabble is not that far-fetched. In the 1950s, hundreds of Borstal boys were called up for national service. Most made good soldiers, and some were even commissioned as officers. This is by no means a soft option. You'll be training tougher, harder, and longer than normal recruits. Follow me. Right-hand man, get on my left shoulder. The lads are divided into two sections under the command of two corporals. In charge of one section is Corporal Thomas, an ex-bad lad himself. Get in there, get the bags, don't do it now. Get in there. He joined the Royal Irish Regiment as a squaddy. It changed his life. He eventually went to Sandhurst where he trained as an officer. Get in! Get in. Right, gents. This is going to be your home, OK? This is where you're going to masturbate. This is where you're going to fart and you're going to breathe each other's farts. This is basically going to become your little cocoon, your little empire. You're my section. I will grow to love you, but at the moment, I hate every one of you. Trust me. Heading up two section is Corporal Murray. He was a sergeant major in the Paras, and he's seen action in Northern Ireland, Sierra Leone and Kosovo. Two section. Pick it up. From this moment on, we beat them at everything. I don't care if it's getting up in the morning, getting to food, fighting, but we will beat them. Do you understand? Yes, yes, go, 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 bro. Pull it! Hurry up! Get out! Pull it! Stand still! Dick brain! The military machine gets into gear with paybook issue. Miguel! Get in here, Miguel! This is your service and paybook. You lose it, you don't get paid. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Hand! Give me your hand! Now, f off! Let's speed this up! Smith! Yes. What do you mean, yo? What do you mean, yo? What do you think you are, lad? What do you mean, yo? Do you think I want to listen to words used like that? Get rid of the bad habits. They're not wanted here. Do you understand that? They're not bloody wanted! You've got to beat a gyro, but... <laughs> <laughs> Next to the quartermaster's stores, where the lads get their mattresses, bedding and mess kits. Hurry up, once you've got your bedding, OK, fall in, back out here. Follow in, follow in. First impressions of the organised chaos of army life have changed little in 50 years. Move on, move on, move on, jump, 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 move on. And, and it's carrying the damn stuff. And if you drop anything, you drop. If you drop this, you'll pay for it. And it was like that. Then you're mad. Like, right. And everything was fast time. Left, right, left, right. And the socks were falling off. And the underpants were falling off. It was unbelievable. And I had, I, I had all this stuff to carry, and I was only little. So you get back to your billet. I, I looked around. And half of the stuff was on the floor. Go! Go! Keep going! Keep going! Go on! Come on! Run. Go. Corporal Murray is already Go. whipping two sections into shape. Go! Dress over there, keep the mattress off the floor. But one section are having problems. Keep the mattresses off the floor! If I turn around to see a mattress on the floor, everybody will be punished. Trust me. They can't even obey a simple instruction. Pick the mattress off. Pick the mattress off. Someone tells us, right? Was it on the ground? Mattresses down on the ground! 
We'll start with 20 star jumps followed by 20 press ups. Oakley, count them. One, two, three, four, five. Dick splash. Six, get your seven, mattress on the get eight, your eight, mattress on the ground nine, and start ten, working ten, like the rest 11, of them. Hurry up and nine, do it. 13, 14, 15, 20 press ups. Press ups. Go. Make sure that broken cup, every bit of it comes with you. You kicked it. Get over here. Come here. Come here. Stand out here, Oakley. Stand here. Madison's on the ground again. This time you can thank Oakley. 20 press ups. Go. Count them out. Count them out. Count them out. I'm not Oakley. Count them out. I am Count not Oakley. Up. What's your name? Miller. Miller what? Gary. Miller what? You up for all. Right. Count them out. Miller. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Chest to the ground. Sit. Listen in. I do not punish the individual. The individual who mucks up or the individual who makes an arse out of me or the section, the section gets punished. Go! Get over there! Get in the door! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Leave the stuff! Get in the door! Hurry up! Get in the door! Get in the door! Nemo! Get in the door! Get in the door! Get in the door! Get in the door! That little get who makes us run and he probably couldn't run 100 yards, but got to do as you're told. I think he's a bit of an idiot. <laughs> Kicking my cup over the floor, there was no need for that. It wasn't, I mean, it's just on my. and he's kicked it and it smashed. I ain't got a cup, I got half a cup, that's what I got. What am I supposed to do with that? 7 pm and time for scoff. Has everyone got the knife, fork, and spoon? Yes, 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 yes. All right, make sure you get in your hands now, because when I say go, like shit off a shovel, you're gonna fall in outside. Go, go, go! Get in, get your scoff. Hurry up, stop it away. Get in, get your scoff. <laughs> The 1950s army menu goes down better with some lads than others. We mentioned earlier on this afternoon that you are about to become potential officers and, of course, gentlemen. Shut up, stop laughing. I noticed elbows on the table. That is not the sign of good manners, as far as I am concerned, of one that we call an officer. We provide you with good food. God provides you with good food. Laughing at the sergeant is not a good idea. Yo, stand still. The rest of you sit down. Gary Miller has already had one run in with his corporal. Sit down, 20 press ups. You'll learn. Fall in. Get in your seat. Hurry up. Miller, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? Can't do push-ups and make me eat again. That's just not. That's just not common sense, I can't is do it? Can't push-ups and what? You, you got a problem with hearing? I was really Miller, get off! Get off, Miller! Come here! Come here! Come here a second. Have I got to stand still? Stand there. Have I got a problem with hearing? What are you saying to me? I can't make you do press-ups and then make you eat. Why is that then, well, Miller? You obviously can, but don't expect. Well, to then I can't exactly. Don't then get back to over there. Food, Shut up, or you'll be locked up and you'll get no food. Get back in your seat. Although not one of our baddest lads, shoplifter Gary Miller is a master in the art of bat chat. I'm a little bit cheeky, I'm a little bit wool, a little bit wee, I'm a bit of a geezer. I'm rude to my mum. I don't mean to be, but sometimes you need to be rude to your mum because she don't make sense. My girl's a little shit, but he is, honestly. If you could have a... Brick, I would have thrown it at him. He told my mum once that he really hated her and he hated the sound of her voice. And I said to him, please don't speak to me like that. And he goes, Mum, you're just you're just a bitch. My friends and family think I've got a quite quick wit about me and I've got an answer for everything I've been told. People know not to mess with him. He's, he's Gary Miller. Miller's still refusing to eat his dinner. Take the stupid look off your face, Miller. Take the stupid look off your face. Look, this look. I've... This snarl. 
This face that's growling doesn't say much. And when it does, it comes out as absolutely bloody ridiculous. What is your problem? I haven't got a problem, Sergeant. Don't tell me you haven't got a problem. It was written all over your bloody body. I can read you like a book. I'm not about to tell you anything you don't know, Sergeant, so don't answer your question. I'm asking what? you now a question. You're going to answer me a question you already know. I'm the asking you, don't you fact chat me. I am asking you to give me the answer to the question quite clearly. Do I, you you show me. the signs of somebody who is totally cocky, who's got his head up his own ass, who thinks he knows better. We are trying to educate young men in there. We, don't you nod your head or I'll rip it off. You're a character who rubs people up the wrong way, straight away. Oh, lovely me. You're a f cheeky little girl. Call Dean. Get him away. Yeah, Get in that guard room. I want him beasted. I want the provost sergeant on him now, and I'll come and see him in an hour. All right, Norman, could you get the provost sergeant, please, to the guard room? Okay. Provost Sergeant Tim Weston is in charge of law and order on the base, and a man not to get on the wrong side of. He served with the regular army in the Grenadier Guards. What's this? Provost Sergeant Flavor Miller! There's still Miller. Were your crime? What's your crime? Why did that belong? Why are you here? Why am I being inconvenienced? Why have I been dragged out of my dinner? Because of you, you maggot, you gonna cry? Absolutely not, Sergeant. <sighs> Don't give me that nonsense, mate. What have you done? What's your crime? You've got two seconds to tell me, or rip ass out, shit down your neck. I wouldn't eat my dinner, Sergeant. Why is that then? Because it was shit, was it? No, Sergeant. You lovely. refused the Queen's meal! No, Sergeant. Why didn't you eat it then? I find it hard to digest food and push-ups at the same time, sir. Sergeant. You call me sir again, and I'm gonna rearrange your testicles. I apologize. Don't apologize to me and refer to me always as Sergeant, do you understand? Sergeant! Oh, a lot louder! Sergeant! A lot shaggy louder! Sergeant! Oh, we've gone down the decibel, haven't we? I. I hate people like you. Don't move your head, boy. You keep it. Show me you got some spine. Show me you got some spine. And don't, don't you push into me. Don't you push into me. I'll eat you a knife. Stand stuck in hell. I is a horrible man. I am a nightmare. I will eat you. I will me out of bone and pass your bones to my dog. Unluckily for Miller, his introduction to the Provost Sergeant's unique take on army discipline has only just begun. I know where the bottom lip's starting to go. I know where the bottom lip's starting to go. You show me you got some fine. Miller pays a price for his back chat with an intense physical punishment, known in the army as beasting. You sure you learned your lesson, boy? Sergeant! Generations of soldiers have found that answering back to your superiors gets you nowhere. You do not answer back. Sometimes some very silly individuals did actually shout back at the NCOs. I trapped! Who do you think I am? Betty Grable, and I just couldn't resist quietly saying no, but you still need fucking. So I need fucking, do I? You're in seven days. Seven days, jankers. You learned your lesson, boy! Keep it going! Keep it going! It's the shittest day I've ever had. They tell you when to eat, they tell you when to sleep, fart, shit. And I'm not used to doing that. I like to shit when I want, fart when I want, eat when I'm hungry. Degrading. 99% degrading. I've never felt like such a wanker in my life. Sick of the beasting, having to do press ups and stones. My hands are hurting. Like Colt was a bit of a dickhead. He shouts all the time. Uh, the food's shit. Um, he's a bit hard, actually. He ain't what I thought it'd be. He's a lot harder than I thought it would be. When Miller eventually returns to his billet, it's 10 o'clock. Time for lights out. Good to see you all in bed. You may not feel like sleeping. However, remember, I will not tolerate any fannying around. OK, you're grown men. Act like grown men. Lights out. It's 6.15 in the morning. Today, the lads will be stripped of their civilian identity and put into uniform for the first time. First off, 
haircuts. You will not look round the door. First two in, move now. Go. Standard 1950s issue was a short back and sides. Anything that can be hidden by the beret, the lads get to keep. A small remnant of their former self. <laughs> I bet this looks really bad. I'm not saying anything about you, by the way. It's just the, the style of the haircut is shit. I think this is a pussy's haircut as well. This is a quiz on it. This is the nicest thing I've done since I've been here. I've sat here and have my hair done. So I get to sit down and the shaver tickles my head and makes me feel comfortable. <laughs> Miller may be enjoying himself, but for many of these image-conscious 21st century lads, getting a National Service haircut is a painful experience. Next! Last in the line is the one with the most to lose. Les Harvey, a.k.a. Nemo. Father. Far bit for me to teach you your job, but bear in mind the purple goes right to the roots. I want that absolutely shaved off. Your scalp is even bloody purple. Don't laugh, boy. Don't laugh, because it's not funny. Oh, I'm gutted. So late, my head's really cold now. Um, I've got one on, there's one on the wall for me to remind myself. So that is the perfect haircut. It's called a floppy top. The floppy top, because that's all he's got. Getting the brill cream in there as well. That's the right amount in the hands. Massage it together. Get it in your hair. As soon as you get it in your hair, give me the correct hairstyle. <laughs> yeah? There we go. No, no, I like the quiff. Go on, give it a bit of the quiff. All right? <laughs> Feeling a little bit better about that already, aren't we? Two sections metal is being tested. These mats weigh the same as a fully grown man, and they've already dragged them round the parade square three times. Start walking! Start walking! Put your mats down. <laughs> Are these bad lads as tough as they think? What I want you to see, gentlemen, is up to the other end of the squares on your shagging belt buckles, keeping your new friends on your back. You think you're them boys? Let's go! Let's go! Crawl! Uh, crawl! Use your elbows. Your Crawl. This is not just a test of strength and stamina, but of guts and grit. Come on, Priestman, you can do this. You, as fair. Smith, get up here. Come on. Priestman. Start moving yourself, son. That's falling off my back, though, isn't it? Is it? There's the new excuse. You are a man of excuses, aren't you? Rocco Scalesio is buckling under the strain, more worried about his designer clothes than proving his worth. Nice, pretty boots. Yeah, right. snazzy tracks, designer labels, it's all about down. bloody image. But what you need to do, lad, support the image, get the attitude right. At the moment, all you're giving it is the mouth. Come on, son, that's that! That's what I wanted a section! So far, only Ben Priestman is impressing Corporal Murray. Come on, forget about the pig. Come in me, come in me, keep coming. Keep coming. Excellent. I'm arrogant, a bit of a schemer, and a little bit of a white boy. The guy's a loser. The guy's a complete loser. I've dabbled in a bit of credit card fraud, held my nose occasionally, S sold a little bit of the smelly green stuff. He's a complete arsehole who thinks he's <laughs> me, um, Al Pacino in, in Luton. <laughs> I took £1,400, well, borrowed £1,400 from an employer. What Ben did here was a complete, complete wank thing to do. I just couldn't believe that he'd done anything so quite so stupid. I think it's a f***ing arsehole. It's me right up and it's still haunting me from the day on, to be honest with you. Ended up with 220 hours community service. I'm sure Ben had every intention of giving it back because Ben is not a thief. I kept the money here. Yeah. I still owe him the money now. I would never ever trust him. Not as far as I throw not, not even far as I throw no, I wouldn't touch him. I wouldn't throw him to be honest with you. Keep it going. Here's the lane. Here's the lane. Come on, two more. Bring it west here. Excellent. Stand up. For the first time in his life, Priestman has achieved something. You wanted to prove me wrong, didn't you? I, I just... Yo, look time, at me. Don't look behind me. Look time, my eyes. Every time I looked at your face, it made me angry. It, it made you angry? Yeah, it made me very angry. Yeah, very angry. Yes, so what, you, what do you want Why to do, do with that anger? What do I want to do? What are you going to do with Bend that anger? Channel it. You're going to channel it to do what? To become a... A leader of men, Corporal. A leader of men. And you'll become a leader of men because I'm going to make you like that. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Now look me in the Eyes, right in the eyes. What are you going to become? I'm going to become a leader of men, Corporal! Tell me. Yes, Corporal! Leader, leader of men! Good lad, man. Stand up. Yeah, do you want to see my knees? Good. Woo! I was 
Priestman might be glowing with a sense of achievement, but it's all too much for one of the lads. Just had a report that somebody's done a bunk. They've legged it through the gate and uh, they disappeared. Can't at this stage tell you who it is. As soon as we find out, we'll deal with it. <laughs> Runaway Ben Haynes is a local lad, but before he has a chance to call a taxi home, Corporal Murray heads him off at the pass. I just can't tolerate it. I want to go back. I'll tell you what I want to see my daughter. Listen, listen. No. You've got to go back. No, I don't want to go back. I ain't going back. Look. I'm out here now. I'm not in under your control now. I'm out here, right? No. What's the problem? Why did you go here off? So I just lost it. I couldn't take it. I just snapped in myself. I had to go. Things must have been desperate in the camp for Haynes to want to run back to his hometown. Where I live in Gosport, there's, there's nothing to do. It's boring. I think it's a bit of a dive, really. That's half the reason why there's so many people getting in trouble, taking drugs and that. Drink drugs and fighting, not a good mix. I was smoking weed. Every day since I was about 14, 15. I would get stoned on my way to work, then get stoned as soon as I get back. Sometimes I'd get stoned at work if I could. It was just it used to be a state. He's skinny, lost his colour. He just wasn't a nice person, to be honest. Mess with your head if you keep smoking it every day. It's clean now, he's good, he's doing well. I've done it for my daughter. It's not fair on her if I'm gonna be out my nut all the time. She's good as gold, well, I'll say she is, even though when she's naughty, I can't tell her off and she's my girl, isn't she? Probably the only thing I've decent I've got in my life. I look back now and I've got nothing, you know what I mean? I've lost all my jobs and uh, I've got no money, nothing to my name, and I live with my nan. Corporal Murray has managed to talk Haynes round. Well, Murray, Sergeant, we go straight up to the two commander now. Absence without leave is a very, very serious offence. Is just short of desertion. Okay? Yes, People used to get shot for that. Get him out of here. Haynes has got a trip to the Provost Sergeant to look forward to. But before that, he goes back to his section to explain himself. Well, how far did you get, yeah. brother? How far did you get? I was about to fucking use the phone box and get a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did, did they grab him? What fuel to get you in the car? No, no, nothing like that. It was totally up to me whether I came back or not, really. You know what I mean? Yo. Yes. Yeah. But I just said, you know what I mean? Once I calmed down and thought about it, you know what I mean, boys? I fucking thought I'd let all you down. I let myself down and that. I just thought, fuck it, I'm going back, you know what I mean? I ain't going to be a quitter. It's all I've ever done is fucking quit shit all my life. Get on your fucking knees, boy, and carry on. Staying put means Haynes keeping his appointment at the guardhouse. Remember, I don't want to paint all up that fucking brush, Sergeant. He has to paint the Provost Sergeant's beasting drum white with an artist's brush. Don't go fucking jumping out of my fucking gate again, right? So it looks bad on my fucking resume. Don't forget that I'm gonna need probably two coats. There's one last hurdle before the other lads get their uniforms. Take off all your clothes, less your boxer shorts. An army medical, 1950s style. Press forward, push up slightly. Push up slightly. Drop your boxer shorts to your ankles. Stand back up straight. Do that now. Stand up straight. Hurry up. Stop looking at his penis. Kendall, get over here. Turn around. Have a good look all the way down the line at all the penises. Right, you happy enough? Now fall back in and stop looking around. Hurry up. Thank you. I do remember with some uh, trepidation a man holding my testicles and saying, cough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can you gain by fondling somebody's moller? It was like a sort of conveyor belt. There was no proper medical. It was get them in and get them out and get them A1. If you were there and standing up and you've got hair on your chest, you were in the army. 
In the 1950s, most boys joined up as virgins. It's a very different story now. How many women have you slept with in your life? About 40, sir. 40? Yes, sir. You're a stud. So, so. Over 30. Men or women? Uh, women. Women. In between 60 and 80, sir. And how many men? None, sir. Have you ever slept with a man? No. Okay. Sheep? No. Have you ever slept with a woman of loose moral character? What? Sorry? Pardon? Sorry? Have you ever slept with a tart? Crossage, I guess. Yeah. And how much did that cost you? 50 euro. So, ah. Uh, uh, you smoke? Yes, sir. What do you smoke? Uh, well, I've come in here to stop smoking weed, but... Weed? Yeah. You smoke weed? Skunk, yes, sir. What other drug do you take? Cocaine, sir. And cocaine. Anything else you'd like to tell me about? <laughs> uh, in your own time. MDMA, sir. MDMA? Oh, that's a big word. What's that stand for? <laughs> uh... Make my eyes bigger, make me dance like a nutter for a year. Right. Despite their 21st century lifestyles, all 30 lads have been past fit for 50s service. But for some of them, the whole experience was a bit of a blur. PTU, that's, that's it. To bring things into focus, the specky four eyes are issued with 1950s NHS glasses. I look like fucking Chris Evans with these. What the fuck? <laughs> Ridiculous. Now the lads must say goodbye to modern fashion. It's back to the quartermaster's store for their uniforms. Are you all stood in front of a set of kit with your name on it? Yes, yes sir. In all, the lads received 58 pieces of kit, which will cover all eventualities from PT to manoeuvres in the field. Don't drop any of that. Put your chin on it. Go! Get over there, get in! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hey, hey, yeah. You're in a box of water! Just fucking look at that! Hey, what you think? Them and them glasses. <laughs> You've had a beauty day. <laughs> I'm never gonna fucking pull a bird ever again. <laughs> this is the car key that clothed millions of Tommies in two world wars. Give it time, you'll go to love it. Compared to the clothes the lads are used to, these uniforms are hot, heavy and itchy. But hopefully, after four weeks, they'll be wearing them with pride. They're starting to look different. The transformation is beginning. The green machine is starting to move in sequence. I'm ready to kill now. No, no questions about it. <laughs> it's tight. It feels very tight. But, like, yeah, don't get me wrong, it feels quite good. Because, like, obviously, you feel part of something now. I seem to have more status. When I've got it on, I actually feel I'm part of the camp now instead of just a rabble walking around. You know I'm not used to this. I mean in my hoodie and all that. Double away. <laughs> we love pain, don't we? What do we love? What do we love? Pain! It's time for the lads' first PT lesson. One section in blue, two section in red. Press a position. No! Heads up and smile. Press ups are good for you. Burn, stretch, burn, stretch, burn, and hold. Down in the hold position. Down. Oh, maximum effort. Stretch. Oh, up, 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 up. If I see you skiving again, son, look in for a look out. Yeah. Let's go, 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 Let's go, come on. Keep sweating. Physical fitness has always been at the heart of army training. But in the 1950s, fitness levels among new recruits were much higher than today. And already some of our 21st century couch potatoes are struggling to keep up. Looking through. Heads up, keep breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Wesley Worrell has asked to see the corporal. Over here, over here, follow me. Just 24 hours in, he's after a discharge on compassionate grounds. Have a seat. What's up, you know? I don't want to quit, but... Hey? I don't want to quit, but... Take your time, take your time, calm down, calm down. What's up? Corporal, I can't do it. I don't want to let the section down, but I really can't do it, seriously. Well, tell me why you think you can't do it. <laughs> take your time, take your time. Come on, I know it's two days, yeah, and I feel disgraceful. I think you're doing fucking really well, that's why I'm really surprised. I came in it and I wanted to pass you. Uh -huh. 
for myself and for my daughter as well. It takes a man to cry. Yeah. I for miss my family so much. And when I you know it sounds pathetic, yeah. Miss your family? Pull the other one. Ten times convicted thief Wesley Worrell is hardly a model dad. I must be the fertilest man in Roxdale. I'm 23, I've got three kids and one on the way. I'm due to have his baby at the end of this month, but um, a couple of weeks ago he just rung me up and said that he'd lost interest. No, I don't do family. There were no feelings there. He's got three kids which he doesn't have anything to do with. I'm leaving a trail of babies behind that'll never know the father. It can be a bastard. Kiss my ass. My dad won't have nothing to do with me because I stole his computer. I've disowned him already. I've let my dad down big time. I was in the army in the 50s myself and I know he won't act it. They can scream, shout, spit in my face or anything they want, but they're not going to get to me. And I don't want to sit here and cry. I want to be wasted, lads, in, in the section. Oh. For now, Worrell decides to stay in uniform. But what will tomorrow bring? It's the start of day three, and one section are already running late. Where's your towel? Get your towel. Hurry up, get out. Where's your towel? There's your towel there. I can bloody see your towel. Get the towel, lift it out, put it out. Come over here, you. I'm one fucking home. Private Worrell is still struggling to adjust to army life. At the first sign of problems, you cannot keep cracking. At the first sign of problems, when someone shouts at you, you can't keep cracking. You do that during life. What sort of effort or what sort of life do you think you're going to be able to give people? First time some boss shouts at you, you're just going to crack and say, bollocks, I'm going home. First sign of a bit of trouble. First sign of someone shouting at you. Get in, get your towel, get your wash shaving kit. Hurry up and join the rest of the section. I'm going on corporal. Go and you're not going home without a shave. Go and get your wash shaving kit I'm and your towel. I'm going on corporal. Dress like that, without a just shave. like this. Without a shave. Without anything. Go and get your wash shaving I'm kit. I'm not going getting anything. I'm going on corporal. Provo staff, get him away in the guardroom now. Get him away. Get him away. I'll speak to Last him. night, Worrell claimed he was missing his daughter. This morning, he's got another excuse for wanting out. The reason I want to go is because I'm injured. Don't get me wrong, I do miss my daughter as well. And, but it's not the main part, but it could be a part, why as well. He says he's been suffering from tummy ache and thinks he's got appendicitis. But the medic says there's nothing to worry about, so he's sent back to his section. Pull in! Pull in! Oh, sit down! Sit down! It's time for the rest of the recruits to meet their most senior commanding officer, Major Henry Dodds. He's keeping an eye on this bunch for any signs of officer potential. This is your last chance to do something with your lives. If you don't take this chance to change yourselves, the life ahead of you will be just as rotten as the life you've led so far. It's easy to lie or cheat or steal. But what's hard is doing the right thing. And that's what I expect you to do. To choose to do the right thing on this parade square right now. Carry on, police sergeant major. Look at these gentlemen now. Look at them. To show the lads what they should aspire to, Sergeant Ray parades two thoroughbred officers. Here we see a highly skilled and trained British Army officer. He has the eyes of curiosity and suspicion. He has the stiff upper lip. He has the chin of honour. He has the nose that can sniff out a rat at a thousand yards. He leads by example. Interestingly enough, each and every one of you also have these qualities in there somewhere. Stand easy, go! With Sergeant Ray's words ringing in their ears, the recruits line up for their platoon photograph. Look up, look up, 
Get over, shoulder to shoulder. Thanks, Andre. You well? The two sections are about to lock horns in battle for the first time. Going back to what we originally discussed when you met me on day one, minute one, I mentioned the qualities and attributes of a Queen's Commission officer, did I not? Yes, Sergeant! One of the qualities I mentioned was the stiff upper lip. To exercise the stiff upper lip, the pencil is to be placed on top of your upper lip and hold the pencil in position. The moment a pencil drops, you address over here. Pencils in ready? Stand by. Time starts now. Stay still. Exercises like the stiff upper lip test are used to this day in guards regiments to develop recruits' powers of concentration and self-control. Last man remaining. There is a stiff upper lip. Poise. Posture, determination. Well done, Miller. Good effort. Good effort. We're down to one man in one section. We've got four men in two sections. How long are we going to last? With only four left standing, a healthy rivalry has already set in between the sections. Convict Hayden Russell takes the honours for two section. Private Worrell is still adamant that he wants out, so it's time for the Provost Sergeant to pass him up the chain of command. Why haven't you cleaned your bleeding ear holes out there? Oh, they got a sack of spuds hanging out of there, boy. Look at that. And had time to show a sergeant. Hey, that ain't my bleeding problem, it's yours. You should have found time. There's a bucket there. Stick your head down that bucket and wash it off now. Can't, there, I can't have you being seen by my fucking platoon commander. Wash it off, wash it off. Keep me going, right in the arrows, right in the arrows. No, 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 come on, let's go. Stand by. Here we go, here we go. Right up front, quick, fast. Yo, right, yo, right, yo. 50 years ago, there was no way out of national service. The alternative was prison, but our modern lads are volunteers. When they signed up, they agreed to abide by a strict code of military discipline, including a 24-hour cooling-off period before they could leave. Right, go, right, go, right, go. Right, world. Understand you're not enjoying yourself here. I'm in pain, sir. You're in pain? Yes, sir. I think you've seen a doctor, haven't you? Yes, sir. And what did the doctor say? He said I'm not fit enough to do the physical side of Adelaide's Army, oh, sir. That's certainly not what came through to me. It's the main problem, sir. What are the other ones? Uh, my daughter, sir. Your daughter? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm not entirely convinced, Worrell. After a day of whinging and excuses, Worrell is still determined to go. You're pointless to me. You're a waste of my staff's time. You're a waste of resources. And as such, I don't want you as part of this platoon. <laughs> Probably, Sergeant. Go! Yeah. Get him off this camp. Trip right, your bed down, take your mattress cover off. Get it done. Hurry up. Well, you can move now, can't you? Before he can leave the base, army procedure requires Worrell to return every single piece of kit that has been issued to him. Remember, you got to carry that. A man with bad stomach, he bounced around pretty well. Right, get in there and give the court martial like stuff back. Tip it out, let's see what we've got. You don't have to go fucking mental. Right, hand the bits back in one at a time. Oh, mattress cover. Pillar. 
you either put it on the counter or you'll be here even longer. And you need to do it slowly because I need to check it. Put stuff on one at a time. Excellent. Massive. So, habitual thief Wesley Worrell lasted just a few days before copping out. Imagine what two years of enforced national service could have done for him. All right, guy. Mr. Worrell for Civvy Street. Where you go, Worrell? To your right. Worrell steps back into the 21st century with a dishonourable discharge from Bad Lad's army. Look out, Rochdale. He's back sooner than you thought. Next week on Bad Lad's Army, the proper sergeant's reign of terror continues. The balls ain't so fucking big now, are they? Sergeant. There's a new face in camp. Hello, sweetheart. Hi! Hey! Oh, don't call her sweetheart. Oh, yeah. off the mess, is it? And the lads are forced to clean up their act. Oh, yes. Come on, let go on his butt. You want to go under his arm? Wait, open his legs. Don't Get take your skin off, Lee. 